section 4.3 Introduction to Factoring. A factor in factorization. So the definition of a factor to factor a polynomial is to express it as a product. So let's use those words using numbers. So if I have a number like 6 is equal to 3 times 2, 3 and 2, those are your factors. They're your factors of 6 because when you multiply them, we get 6. Moving forward, to factor polynomial p is a polynomial that can be used to express p as a product. So I want to think of two expressions, then when I multiply them, I get a polynomial. Now it's not so easy as just thinking of them, there's some work to do to create them. Definition of factorization. A factorization of polynomial p is an expression that names p as a product of factors. When factoring a polynomial, we look for factors common to every term and use a distributive law. So let's take a look at this first problem. Factor out the common factor of 9m squared minus 27. So let's first take a look at our numbers. 9 and 27. Is there a number that divides into both of those numbers? Yeah. Well, you might be thinking of two numbers. You might be thinking of 3, right? In that case, we get 3 and 9. But we see again that it can be divided one more time. Right? So our two numbers that would divide evenly are 3 and 3. Now, that's why it's important to not just only find a factor, but to be able to recognize the greatest common factor. So if we look at these numbers again, 9 and 27, I should be able to see, okay, we saw that 9 was that number that divides these two numbers evenly. 9 divided by 1 is equal. 9 divided by 9 is 1, and 27 divided by 9 is 3. So I can go ahead and factor out that 9 and write down our answer. 9m squared, well, 9 divided by 9 is 1, so we're just left with m squared. 27 divided by 9 is 3. So this is our answer. Now in this first example, we only had numbers, but we can also factor variables. Let's take a look at this problem. Write an equivalent expression by factoring. Okay, so let's go ahead and label what our greatest common factor is. Okay, so we see that if I look at my numbers, five is a number that divides into both of these, right? So 5 will divide them both. And then when you're looking at your variables, look what variables they all have in common. So they all have an x. And then pick the one that is the smallest degree, meaning pick the one that has the smallest exponent. So we have that x squared. So we have x squared, x to the sixth, x to the third, x squared is the smallest one. And then we also have y's all throughout. We have y to the fifth power, y cubed, y to the fourth, pick the smallest one, y to the third power. Now essentially, we're dividing each one so that we have 25x squared times y to the fifth power divided by 5x squared y cubed. And then we have 35x to the sixth power y to the third power divided by 5x squared y cubed. And then we have negative 15 x cubed y to the fourth power divided by 5x squared y cubed. Okay, so let's first divide our numbers. 25 divided by 5 gives us 5. And then where x is, we see we have x squared divided by x squared. Anything divided by itself is 1. So my x squared is divided to make 1. 
Now let's take a look at our y's. Looking at our y's, when I'm dividing exponents, we're essentially subtracting. So we have 5 minus 3, we get y squared. Okay, next one. 35 divided by 5, that gives us 7. And then we have x to the 6th power divided by x squared, we get x. And then 6 minus 2 gives us 4. All right, now we have y to the 3rd power divided by y to the 3rd power. Anything divided by itself, it's 1. So we just get 1. We don't need to write that 1. And then next we have negative 15 divided by 5, we get negative 3. Then we have x to the third power divided by x squared, which gives me x, and 3 minus 2 gives me 1. And then I have y to the fourth power divided by y cubed, gives us y, y to the first power. We need to write that first power. So that's what we'll have inside our parentheses. On the outside, we'll have what we divided everything by. So we have 5x squared y cubed. We have fully factored this polynomial. Okay, some things we saw in this problem, mainly the exponents. This is what's called our, one of our rules of exponents. And it's called the quotient rule. Quotient means division. So the quotient rule says if I have the same variable raised to some exponent, say m and n, I can write it as one variable with our exponent subtracting m minus n. For example, here we saw something like y to the fifth power divided by y to the third power. Since they're both y's, we just subtract their exponents. So that we have 5 minus 3, we get 2. That is our quotient rule. And that's what we're applying in the, these factoring problems. Terms with a common factor. Polynomials that cannot be factored further are said to be factored completely. The factors in the resulting factorization are said to be prime polynomials. So if you can factor it, that's okay. Don't freak out. It could be prime. When the linear coefficient is a negative number, we generally factor out the common factor with a negative coefficient. And that's like an unwritten rule in the math. We don't like for things to start with a negative, so if we can, we factor it out. Let's take a look at this next problem. We have negative 4x squared minus 16x. So I know I have to factor out a negative. Now, what number divides 4 and 16? Well, 4 times 4 is 16, and 4 times 1 is 4, so 4 will do it. And we see they both have x's. Pick the x of smallest to green. Okay, that is our factor. Let's go ahead and divide each one. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1. And x squared divided by x, you just subtract. So four mi 2 minus 1, we get x. Okay, and for our next term, we have negative 16 divided by negative 4. We get positive 4. And x times x, well, that makes 1. So that is our answer. And if you're ever unsure, you can always distribute it back in to see if we get the same answer in return. Factoring by grouping. In expressions of four or more terms, there may be a common binomial factor. Often, in order to identify a common binomial factor, we must regroup in two groups of two each, of two terms each. 
Okay, so we can factor by grouping. So notice, and we have two sets of terms. We have this and this. Within them, do we notice anything in common? Well, yeah, we see this x plus 4. Let's go ahead and factor out that x plus 4. If we do, we're left with x plus 4. And what are we left with inside? Just an m and a y minus b. So m plus y minus b. This here is factoring out the greatest common factor like we did before. But instead of just being one term, it was a whole expression. It was a binomial. Another way we can factor by grouping is by grouping the first two and the last two so that we can have a situation like the one we just had here. If I group my first two and my last two, see we can factor out a y to the third power. We have y squared minus 5. In our second group, we can factor out a 3. So that we have y squared and 15 divided by 3, we get 15. Notice that within these two terms, they have something in common, that y squared minus 5. Let's factor out that y squared minus 5. And we're left with just y cubed plus 3. This is factoring by grouping. Now, an interesting about factoring by grouping is that sometimes, well, you need to have four terms. Notice we have one, two, three, four terms. And sometimes we have to rearrange them. Not all the time, but sometimes we have to rearrange our middle two, and that will usually make it so we can factor. So let's take a look at these problems. <clears throat> For this next example, I notice that if I group my first two and my last two, there's something in common for each pair. For my first two, I see I can factor a 3, and I'm left with x minus y. For my last two, I can factor out a negative a, so I'm left with x minus y. Okay, same idea. I see that I have two terms. And I also notice that they have a common factor. So let's divide out that common factor so that I have x minus y and 3 minus a. So cool, right? Let's take a look at our last example. Let's group my first two and my last two. Now my first two, I can factor out an x squared so that I'm left with x plus 2. Uh, my last two, mm, I can factor it too. So then I'm left with x minus 2. Mm, they're not exactly what we want, right? Let's go ahead and switch the middle terms. Maybe that will help. So that we have um, x cubed plus 2x squared. Oh, we're switching the middle terms. So I'm swapping these two. So I have plus 2x plus 2x squared minus 4. Let's try grouping our first two and our last two. And our first two can factor out an x, so I'm left with x squared plus 2. And our last two, we can factor out a 2, so that we have x squared minus 2. Hmm, I still can't get those signs to match up. When you can't factor a, prob a polynomial, that's okay. Our, op our option is that it is prime. It cannot be factored, such as in this case. Okay, that was section 4.3, Introduction to Factoring.